I'm still not real happy with the image quality, so I've been going through the tuner and video IF circuitry more carefully, rechecking all the resistors, and everything checked out good. Up in the IF here, and I'm checking the peaking coils. This guy was around 4 ohms. Now I'm checking this one. I've got 8.4 kilo ohms. That can't be right. These are typically wound around a resistor just to give it some form. So if the coil goes open, it'll just, uh, you end up measuring the resistor that it's wrapped around. So let's see if I can figure out which one that is. That's a video detector there. So we're coming off pin 7 of that. So the L25, that's the one that uh, seemed to be good. So this is the one I'm checking now. It seems to be open. So let's see what value R25 is supposed to be. 8.2K. So yeah, that's what I'm measuring. That coil's open. So I'm just measuring the resistor underneath, which is drifted up a little bit. So it's a little bit higher than 8.2K now. So let's see what would the effect what effect would that have if it's open uh, well uh, I presume it would affect the output of that detector diode as it goes into the video amp so hmm it's going down to ground I don't know if it would have that much of an effect, but uh, what I can uh, quickly do to, to check that out is to just short it out. Because that would be fairly low resistance, and uh, I can just uh, take an alligator clip and short it out. It's a quick way to, when you got an open peaking coil, to, um, to, to remedy the situation. It won't work as well as having the inductor in there, but it's not as bad as having it open. Might as well check these two guys while I'm at it as well. I'm trying to find a replacement. Eh, good luck. Uh, occasionally I see peaking coils on eBay, but finding the right one that would be a, a proper match for this. That would be tough. Let's see. That was L26. I'll look at the parts list and see if they even uh, give a value for it. It might just be an internal part number. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. It just says peaking coil, and there's a part number, which is a national part number. I do have some cross-reference guides, and if that one's listed, I may be able to find a uh, generic equivalent, uh, like from J.W. Miller Inductors. Or, of course, I can take this out and maybe find a break and repair it, because it may very well just be broken off. At one of the ends. I'm happy to say that I got lucky. All I needed to do was touch up the solder connection on the bottom. It seemed like the wire was not making good contact with the resistor lead. So now I am down to 10.7 ohms and I'm really curious to see what effect that repair is going to have. I've noticed this set takes a surprisingly long amount of time to fire up. BTV, Chicago. Oh yeah, that is much better. You are going to ask your wife for a divorce. Tonight, guy. Oh, wait a minute, we've talked about that. I told you I'll talk to her this summer, when the boy's away. No, darling. I've waited as long as I've got to. But you know what Olive is, what a scene she'll make. I don't want to put the boy through anything like that. He's not a child guy, he's 15. Julian's extremely sensitive. Now, another factor can also be that this like 7JT4 like may be a, I've heard a bit worn out. For girls like me. I'm your spare rib. Fortunately, the only other one I have handy right now 
has uh, loose pins on the base. So loose that I can't try plugging into a socket without fear of breaking them off. Otherwise, I would just pop it into this set. Such discretion. I don't know whether to be flattered or, or angry. You're not ashamed of me, are you, guy? Horizontal jitters are still pretty bad. I can hardly make it through the week to be with you again. You do love me, guy? You know I do. So, uh, I'm going to look in the troubleshooting guide for the set and see if they have any notes about that. Maybe some Mike caps are going bad. I know there's nothing left between you and Olive except except bitterness and the boy. All right, it's true, it's true. And the thought of losing him has paralyzed you. Well, no father likes the prospect of being separated from his son. But with you, it's different, Guy. You you idolize your son. You make a positive fetish of him. With, with you, Guy, it's unnatural. It's... As I had mentioned in an earlier segment, these three potentiometers are rather stiff but with the help of a screwdriver I was able to adjust them but I figure since I've gone this far with the restoration I might as well at least make an attempt to free them up and if I'm lucky maybe it won't be that bad after I got the back cover off I removed the wiper mechanism so right now there's nothing attached to the shaft and it should be rotating freely but it's not it's still stuck so I think what may have happened over time is the plastic may have actually swollen up or maybe reacted with the metal somehow and it's really really in there tight now so unfortunately I think I'm gonna just have to unmount each of these pots and to do that the board has got to come out so well I did it once before so I know how it goes I just have to disconnect a few wires take out the screws and pull the board out All right, I finally got the shaft loose. Initially, what I tried to do was to totally disassemble this like I'd seen on the website, which meant taking off this nut, but it's in a depression, and I just couldn't get a good bite with a wrench using either end. But it turns out it didn't matter because there's an easier way to do it. I just had to pry out the little snap ring that went around that collar, and then set it up on uh, this roll of solder and then this braid just just to give me something that was hollow and long enough for the shaft to go through but give support to the base and I just tapped it a little using one of these guys just from a screwdriver set I put it in here and tap tap and once I tapped it a few times it finally broke the old grease free and it slid right out once it was out, I sprayed it with some electrical parts degreaser and got all the old gunk out. And now it rotates very smoothly inside. I'll apply some new grease, snap that collar back on, put it all back together, and reinstall it, and then move on to the next one. I'll try to capture the process on film when I do one of these two. Now these other two aren't as bad, so actually all I need to do is just take the back off. I was able to loosen these up enough by shooting some degreaser down from the shaft side that I could work them free, but they're still tighter than I'd like them to be. So uh, what I'm doing is taking the back off, which then allows me to get in there more aggressively and clean out the gunk. First thing you gotta do is pry up this little tab, and that's all it's holding the back on. This is actually fairly easy to do. Just getting it started with a little flat bladed screwdriver. I'll take some needle nose pliers, bend up that tab, and here comes the back. Right off. A little bit of cardboard. On on to that and here's the inside so it's got that hoop construction but these are not wire wound these have some type of 
resistive material, probably some kind of carbon compound, deposited on the inside. These are 5 mega ohm pots. Whereas the brightness control I disassembled earlier was only 100K. But the mechanism is the same. This is a metal hoop that gets deformed by the wiper as it goes around and that presses up against the carbon. Now to loosen it up, simply take this screw out. That is what's holding the plastic shaft in. The plastic shaft is threaded down the middle. That's what that screw screws into. So a little bit of wiggling, twisting. There we go. So the little wiper pressure with the pressure pad on it comes out. And there's the gunked up grease, really sticky, really gooey. There's a little washer in there, clean that off, clean the back of this nut off. And I should be able to get the shaft up too. There, and just clean that off. It's like, it's like honey, it's like thick, sticky honey. And I'll clean all that out. What I'm using to clean it is just this electrical parts degreaser. Alcohol works pretty well too. Uh, this type of stuff. That's purple. Uh, 91%. Once I get that all cleaned up, I'm just using a little bit of white lithium grease to re lube it. Alright, all three of them are now freed up and rotating smoothly. But I'm going to leave the back covers off and reinstall this board and make sure that everything is working properly in case I have to get back in there and remove any more gunk. Alright, let's see if those controls work any better now. Not surprisingly, things are way out of whack now. Should have set it first. Horizontal yeah, centers working fine. Vertical center. How about that focus? Yeah, much better now. Much, much better. But now those horizontal jitters are even more apparent. Even so, I'm much happier with the pictures, picture now. So it's not just that the whole picture jitters now and then. It's a weird effect in the picture, especially noticeable at the top. Or maybe it's even throughout the whole picture. You can see it on the edge here too. It's kind of like a weird jagged pattern to it. Adjusting the horizontal fold now. You can really see it when there's vertical bars on the screen. Well, I know there are certainly some micro caps in here on a circuit. So, one of those might be tweaking. Could just try swap it, swapping the tubes on the horizontal circuit too. Yeah, I'll check all the voltages and the usual stuff. You check the resistors, make sure to make any wiring errors. I just made an interesting observation. I've been running this set with the auto transformer in the circuit, which you should only need if your line voltage is really low, which mine is not. The reason I'm doing it is it seems to get the B plus voltages up to where they should be. However, if I take it out of the circuit by switching the other position, the horizontal issues are less pronounced. And the downside is that the picture isn't as bright. 
but I can turn the brightness up, play around with the contrast a little, and there seems to be less tearing. So perhaps I've been running this set a little bit too hot, in other words. Retrace lines are also more pronounced, but uh, oh, I'm hoping to on, modify the circuits a little bit to reach to suppress those. I just found a few more things to try. In addition to the rider service info I've been using, they've put out a supplement TV troubles and cures in various volumes to cover all the different manufacturers. And this one covers the model and see TV7, which is what I'm working on. And they have a section on horizontal tearing. Now I mentioned this specifically the series 229, 240, and early 249 receivers. I don't know which one I've got. But I can tell you that, for example, R21 in my set is 22K. So this is these are fixes for horizontal tearing. There's also a section for flutter at picture top. And C83 in mine is definitely 220 picofarad. They're saying it should be 110 to 120. So that's something else I can try changing. And one other section here, uh, oscillator and receivers, or oscillation rather, I don't think I've got that problem. But I can certainly try the other two. Oh, and one other uh, modification here is to, instead of grounding, bottom of R22, run it over to one side of the contrast control. So I'm going to try all of these one by one and see what effect they have. Now if you're wondering where did I get this from, well there you go. I'll put the link in the description of the video as well. Video Karma member and Antique Radio Forum member mbear 2 k was kind enough to scan not only these riders uh, notes, but also a lot of other original service info. It's a very handy site. Here are the riders, and there's volume three in particular. And there are the manufacturers, so they pretty much covered all all the brands. Definitely worth looking through. Some of the modifications for retrace suppression and and fixing other various problems. Now they didn't mention a retrace suppression for the TV7 model but hopefully I can try this more generic solution which is to pick a signal somewhere off the vertical output stage and feed it into either the grid or the cathode to blank it out. Here's one in particular for the Admiral 1981 which vaguely similar, it also uses the 7JP4 on this one, instead of grounding the grid, it goes into this RC network. Well, the grid on the TV7 is not grounded. The cathode drive is driven by the video. The grid is controlled by DC restoration. In other words, this varies to compensate for changing levels in the uh, receive signal. So. What I'm thinking I can do is at this node here where there's a whole bunch of stuff coming in. We got an element on the tube, a capacitor, two resistors, and that goes to the grid and the CRT. I'll try connecting a cap from this point over to the vertical output. One side or the other, whichever one has the right polarity, and see if I got a small pulse going in here. It's a negative enough pulse here will drive the uh, CRT into cutoff and it'll blank out the uh the stuff the face while the uh, vertical retrace is going on